a good good evening it seems like we were just doing this not too long ago I hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday that's love of it We are ready to have a few new players debut tonight. I have been looking at the roster a couple times today and I started counting. And I saw um, seven players return from the old squad or from the academy. So that's a Pretty good continuous continuity. I didn't really expect or didn't, I guess, intend or actively try to do that. But here we are. And uh, I was starting to kind of research trying to figure out some of these players. Like, um, two players were American, are American. One actually played at the school I cheer for in college basketball. And wasn't too hard to find some stuff, but then uh, our new friend Theo Skaridis, um, not as much information. And then at that point, I'm like, dude, I'm gonna be like just researching a media guide essentially. This is like putting out a media guide for you know, a team, so I might actually try to do that. Or see if there's already one kind of an existence on the internet for the Tor Turl. Otherwise, I wasn't kind of make up my own bastardize their logo, but it's all in good fun. I try to hold them to the utmost esteem. Nothing but honor. But on that note, I do have a couple of things that. Like I mentioned, basically, are the start of a media guide. And we maybe coach a, coach a national team game since they've just been getting blasted. They continue to lose. So what's the hurt if I can lose by my coaching or the lack of things that I can change during a game that seem to not bother when we simulate. I don't know. I suppose we'll find out. Tonight's episode was quite lengthy as I continue to try to iron out these last second uh, iron out these last second roster gaps, and um, I feel like this team is much better than last year. And despite being surprised by that new facilities or whatever I had to buy, that just Casually took 350k, which would have been at least one more really super player, probably two solid, solid players. But we ended up getting the Greek Freak's brother, one of his brothers. I think he has four of them. A guy I've been referring to as the Greek Sleek. Costas Antete Kumpo. And on that note, I mean, when I show this to you. 
We'll get it with the least scrutiny possible because I did this with Microsoft Paint five minutes before I went live. That's actually why I was late. I spent 20 on 20 minutes on three of these. And they're terrible. They're just so broken. Yeah. Microsoft Paint was not letting me do much, and as soon as you're done editing a text box, it's frozen. So I don't know if there's typos in there. No, I tried to be careful. Is that even showing up? You see that? It's so oh shit, it's awesome. Shit, because the way it's centered on the not size right, so it's kind of whatever. so excited to show you that I, I basically did not spend any time on it but it made me start thinking because there's so much information about two of these guys and I could make up some information about some of the guys on my team if I should not do like a media guide for all 10 or 12 of my players some interesting tidbits and that's kind of one of the things that when I did fire pro and when I did this that I thought I might be able to contribute was knowledge but I don't really know any of these players now I at least have a couple American guys I do um, recall and then I've also learned that Isaiah Austin has Marfan syndrome so I think he's still growing and uh, I saw like different heights listed for him. One, like in college, I think was 6'11", and then one said 7, and then I saw one that even said 7'11", or 7'1". And then I happened to see on his Wikipedia that he had Marfan, so he could very well be grown. I hope that that does not complicate things, and the guy can live, and hopefully not have some of the problems that Marfan syndrome folks do with their life longevity being short. Anywho, if you recall, there was one other guy that we signed that's part of our future and part of a much needed upgrade in our front court. Theo Skiridis, young cat from Athens, Greece. He's actually uh, playing in Australian league currently, in real life, or possibly that's what he was doing before our team signed him, too. I'm not sure. That's why we end up jumping. Let me look at this. But yeah, I wouldn't mind cleaning this up a little bit and then having a splash of information there on the left. <clears throat> or move all this to the left and then having 
white space to the right to put some of that biographical information, random thoughts or pieces of random information from the Wikipedia. But these are our boys now. This is the future. And uh, that meaty guy may be something I put together and I can somehow put a link out somewhere for it. People can take a look at it, make fun of me for doing that. But at the same time, these games, I don't know that I can go back and see historic rosters. I don't know if I can go back and see what the roster I had for 2017 was. Maybe. I'm not sure. I don't think I can. If I go to my schedule, I did see at one time the ability to toggle the schedule to a different season. Yeah, so I guess I could see if I do that. Okay, well that might have saved me some time because <laughs> if I can go and tap into rosters just like that and see exactly everybody that was on my team, then I don't need to make this little media guide of sort just to keep track of it. Not to mention that I also have the names written down yesterday from when I was trying to figure out the budget and yeah. What a freaking idiot. What a fucking loser doing this. And then, you know what? No one's even watching me. How many hours now? I see some other people that have, like, in general proportion to my page views, like, four or five times that. And they have 150 followers. So that's to assume the amount I have now will do four or five times that. I'll be up to four. The followers, I guess, don't even matter. It's just at some point trying to make these roster decisions with other people weighing in or voting seems like an interesting way to play the game, make it a little more fun, but. Now this is still my first playthrough, so it's pretty fun for me because I still don't know what the hell is going to go on down here. I don't fully know if um, I can ever get over the hump with KR. So like this whole save, this whole career might be something I need to just chuck after three or four years if I still have a BKR and all these guys that I just signed are now wanting big bucks and I don't want to have to try to do it again it seems very difficult to try to make a profit when we're getting 280 people to attend games so I'm not sure really where the optimism is supposed to come from that I'll finally be able to develop and train academy players to the point where they're good enough to beat KR. I don't know about all that, man. But we are close to this friendly contest scrimmage with Zwolle I'm not sure how to say that but Landsteed Swole from Dublin not Dublin Dutch Dutch where that country is the Netherlands Dutchland it's not a view what do they used to call it it's Netherlands Holland is that what I'm trying to say it's Holland and Tan inside I think the Netherlands is what they call it because there's a conglomerate of other lands. I know they've got some islands in the Caribbean. I 
defensive cohesion is pretty strong, I think. So, I don't know what's going to happen. They have a U.S. guy, Jamont. No reason to really to stall here. Everybody's perfect training condition. So I guess I should just go ahead and click the button. Seems too too recently that I was sitting here listening to the deafening silence, just hearing it hiss back at me. The cold winter wind just blowing at my face. It's like I don't know if I'm supposed to sit here in silence. Waiting for someone to join the stream, is that what I'm supposed to do? Or I'm just always supposed to pretend that there's someone there? And then also trying to create something that an archive, like, there's no point to archiving or saving streams if I'm just sitting there not talking to anybody. At least this way, I guess there's something. <laughs> I don't know. The other day I woke up and I put, I turned one on just to see how, you know, the stream. I hadn't watched one recently all the way through to see, and uh, I just fell asleep instantly. It's like relaxing, I guess. I have to record my record my own voice and do audio voiceover stuff at work a lot. And when I have to listen to myself say the same things multiple times, multiple takes, pick the right one, sometimes cut and edit out parts and listen back, listen back, make sure it all paced well, I get sick really quick. I hear my own voice. Listening to this wasn't a real thrill for me, but seemed more soothing than I normally sound more Bob Ross not to say that I'm like that but as opposed to my normal sounding voice where it sounds like shut the fuck up I think I probably still sound a little bit like shut the fuck up but hopefully not as much when no one's watching, that might be all the evidence that I need. Put this to the chat, pop back out. Check to see no one got shook up at the train. Okay. And so Isaiah Austin, we have him working on his defense. Marking, I guess, specifically. I think I should change that. His injury risk, and now I guess I understand a little better why he has injury risk. Such 
legit medical issues. So I'm just never going to train him too hard. Make sure we don't push the issue. So let's move it on. Game day. This is kind of a big deal, right? I mean, this is the first chance to see how this team plays. And this is a drastic change with the amount of height. I mean, all the guys that we signed. Ante de Cupo is a small forward, power forward. He's scrawny, but he is tall. Um, Scaritas is a seven or six seven, a decent size guy, power forward, and then, I mean, Antecunto's defense is so incredible, he can play the defense on small forward if he needs to, he could probably suffocate a shooting guard, and then Austin is uh, 15 in jumping, a 13 in blocking. So we've got some rim protection for sure. Um, and then Lula Maravic, don't forget, he's still here. His power got better. This guy is just sitting there, 20 years old, getting ready to, um, you know, make a mark. Need to continue to improve his defense and his rebounding since his offense is kind of a liability but I think coming off the bench he's going to be a nice role player that for now. It's game day here. Very curious to see how all this works out. We've got some very young players now. Pretty much all up and down the roster. Including a 15 year old man. We're, we're over here trying to help this kid through puberty. But at the same time we've got um, Scaritas who is young but has been playing for a few years. Austin's been through college and in China. So let's go ahead and do it then. I'm not sure what else I really had planned other than that. I said something about coaching a national team game, but the next one's not till October 31st. So, probably gonna not do that. That's gonna be a while. <clears throat> so this, I guess, could be a quick one. I need to get through the training and stuff to get close to the regular season plow through some of that so you can definitely do that for your excitement only just for you I'm not allowed to enjoy it at all it's just for you and you're not here if you're missing it Let's roll. Let's see. Let's see what we do. 
I'd like to drag this out just a little bit and see a little more about them. They have a bigger budget than us, much larger than our budget now. But then also, the coach is more handsome. Trying to see their deep or their league or something. And trophies. Lucky cat saying hi again. Let's do this. Let's just. Let's see, this is the first team, first time the team has played together since being assembled. And some NBA level talent. Costas Antetokounmpo, a 20 year old that we're banking on blossoming in the next four years. In the real life equivalent, if you watch the Mavericks. He's been getting some playing time, and I think they might have extended him to next year. They definitely want to have him around at least for one more season. Match attendance, 187. We have not done enough to get the crowd excited and bringing people in to the gates. So I think this team might change that. I d definitely think that there's some athletes, there's some opportunities for excitement with this I think the offense with the defensive philosophy I've been coaching and developing into the younger players with the guys that we brought in who are pure athleticism and decent offensive production too this could be something in the making now if we turn this around we just get spanked um, then I'm going to question all of my life, every every decision. But I don't see, I mean, if this game just is complete bullshit on the back end, there's no actual logic, then maybe that could happen. But otherwise, I think my team's got to be a little better. We lost. I mean, we didn't get spanked, but... How to lose? It looks like there a couple of guys went off of them. Gordon, Zonderman, seven of ten shooting. He hit his free throws too. So I'm wondering if that's not symptom of our front court having some foul problems. Not sure where it fell apart. Poor shooting from our back court. Augustin not doing much. Osmondson. I mean, this was a scrimmage, so obviously Osmondson and Bjarnarsson played more minutes than we would expect. Masson's up there. I didn't even know that. I did know that because. Your Arson is not an academy player anymore. He's actually a roster player. Bill Holmes only got two minutes, though. Branson's look pretty, pretty good. Ante Tecumpo, though. He's probably going to tear this league up, I think. Even though this isn't even a league game, but seeing this as an example, if it's representative of what he's going to do in games in our league, I mean, he's going to be a stud. Six of eight shooting with the free throws. I'll tighten that up. Scarita, six of six with his free throws. Austin, one of one, it's good. Those guys both had pretty good games, good rebounding games. I have turnovers for Austin, though. 
Yeesh. He did play a good bit of the game. Well, there you have it. That's going to have to wet your whistle for Thor Thrill Basketball for at least a month, month and a half. As we do not suit up again until October 7th. I just can't believe we lost that game. Trying to figure out where to focus here. Keep getting a rebound, so I'm gonna. But then, Austin bit it on all his free throws. So why you gotta focus on kind of free throws? Turnovers. That's what I meant. He had a lot, and I'm not sure why the passing and ball handling are a little low. First game with a new crew. I'm gonna try to throw wild alley oops and stuff. Who knows what he was trying to do? Let's see how maybe he's a center though. Why would I have his ball handling much better? Passing. Super size. Sounds good. Let's just be at that. There's a lot of days, a lot of training days ahead. Check on them to see how they're doing, health-wise. Do that. While it's loading, step away just for one second. Okay, so.
Alrighty. Situated with what's happened. Seeing our rain zone is now slightly improved. All these young, dumb suckers are going to be saying they're worried about their contract. Because you signed it when you were young and hungry, and now you're actually a good player. You were getting <clears throat> vastly underpaid. I'm not sure what that's going to end up doing for me. Probably in bad moods, not developing, getting hurt, who knows. I'm trying to win a champion here. Championship with a ridiculously reduced budget. I have to rely on signing these players for very little money. If I can get any good players for this cheap, I might have a chance of winning. But that's the only way. Agnerson's marketability slightly improved. Cole Bean Junson shows a slight improvement in his defensive rebound. This guy's coming along, man. 15 year old stud. Walking ability of Asmundson slightly improved. It is improving. I really worry about a guard that's blocking, but it's part of the overall defending.
I'm not sure this guy should be on the national team. Look at his numbers and stuff, and it's just not great. Get it? I took him off. Pretty sure. Now I can add with that. <clears throat> Numbers over here. We brought up one person. That doesn't say much. And lesson learned there. Citizenship does not allow you to add them. So... Good to know. At one point, I had thought, you know, like these two Americans I have on my team, that if I keep them long term, four or five years, <clears throat> because of my role with the national team, I might be able to get them on that team somehow if they've lived in Iceland long enough. It does not seem to be possible. Everybody that came up is already on the national team. does look like I need to do my own guys on the national team. I think I really <clears throat> oh, outdid myself with that because the team has plenty of guards. Oh, 
worry, worry about lowering these things too much. came off as someone that's already on the team and he's 36 years old so keep pushing these guys there Uh, yeah, the national team is in bad shape. Yeah, not really. I saw everything there. There's just so much training to be done between now and then. And Injury already. Isaiah Austin suffered minor ankle injury during training. Will be out for the next three days. So not a whole lot going on. Get everybody back in good shape. I mean, this is ridiculous because they have so much time, but we don't want any more injuries, so...
So we leave about four days here. We'll bring it back together once that's done. And I'll call it a night for now. I think I can zoom through this month of September pretty quick tomorrow or whenever I stream next. Begin wondering, you know, if I stream too much. Should I, if I stream once a week, if that's something that people will be more a anxious, eager for. Whereas now, I don't need to watch it. I can always watch it tomorrow. It's going to be on again. And he's also got everything on YouTube now. You can just go up to the Hot Rodacy channel and watch all these stupid things. I'm pretty much start to finish. It's like middle of the first season up through now and everything hopefully from here on out. But that said, um, if the game starts just being kind of pointless, this might be the last season. I'm at a, a spot in this game where, okay, I think I'm doing the right things, my team's supposedly getting better, and I kind of figured out the hack with, you know, hiring the young guys for multiple years, but then if it's going to start falling apart on me, and this still doesn't get my team to uh, compete with KR, then... That would be the end of my copious amounts of hours that I can keep giving to it. So where did our simulation start? Bjornsson, slightly better in his three point. Nice. A little more well-rounded, a little offensive contribution. Check our training progress. Everybody's great. Just great. That's all. You working in too much? I guess. And it's a 10 already. Their shooting is better than what he led on last game. Only missed a few. Does he work on defense? Take this to September, or we'll take it to the last day of August, and then 
tomorrow, hopefully, I should be able to work the remainder and get to the first regular season game of season number two. I really do think the front court. I don't know too many league. Pardon me. <clears throat> I don't know too many teams in the league. They're going to be able to handle three, four big guys. And Ante Tukumpo, one of the big guys that can shoot from outside. They, I think all could shoot from outside a little bit. And you got Mula America coming in with defense. Not too bad. Good rebounding. And the athleticism, the shot blocking. I can just get the team cohesion together if everybody can figure out how to gel. Find your specialization. Give everybody some time, but I feel like I'm going to be balancing people's want and desire to play or desire for money. Agnerson again, slightly better than his quickness. He's got a lot to go, but he's getting there. He's only 16. Kind of abandoned his offense altogether, but quickness is a big one. Marking, stealing. His passing's only a four. We're trying to do something with that, too. Keep the turnovers from. Getting out of control quick. Julius Simmons now slightly improved due to his training. Plan. I don't know. Should I keep working on his power or change it? He's 13 now. He's never going to make it on the court, but I'll start improving something else. See if that power is making rebound. This quickness and speed are not good. slightly better in his marking ability. It's all about man. Gotta get that defense. We need to get his speed up eventually too. Could be kind of a transition between the guys we have in the front court now. And then some of these guys coming up who are just going to be just rebound, powerhouse, defensive dudes. Very little offense on this guy, that's for sure. But I think that's where I'm going to leave it for now. We still got a little over uh, a month and a week there. 38 days before harvest. See why I'm trying to cut this one a little quick. But <clears throat> opening day, the season is coming up quick. Our ownership is still expecting us to reach the semifinals. That is our target. And if we don't make it after not making it last year, right? not be good? I don't know. The idea is that we walk out of here when we want to as champions. Not 
and so he fires us and we have to go look somewhere else to start from an even lower spot but we may be getting fired from that Icelandic National League <laughs> national team coach because they're terrible So that said, uh, still trying to look at my team's finances. It's ridiculous how how cheap they have it. Still don't know what to do with that little money. Yeah, I'll try to make it work for this season. If no injuries plague us, I think that we can compete. And I think that next year the team should be expected to be a definite contender. And hopefully continue to develop the talent next year. If we can expand that budget a little bit. I'm not sure who's actually expiring. Let's take one more look at the contracts. Augustson, Lawrenson, Einerson, Mulamerovic. Some decisions maybe to be made there. Mulamerovic, are you still homesick? No, he's fine. We haven't had a chance to really focus on his defense as much. I'm trying to get his free throws up. Let's focus on his rebounding. But definitely would be interested in re signing him. He'll go with the. What happened here? Austin's hurt, so we don't have anybody set as center. Um, I like that two-headed monster there. And then Sacritus, Sacritus, and Antetokounmpo. Power forward as needed. Einerson come off the bench. Bill Holmson, if really needed. And then, yeah, we've got a guard here, we've got a guard there. We just probably need a good backup point guard, especially if August on these. We're going to have to break the bank on a point guard. He's not bad. I mean, 21 years old. He's worth holding on to a little longer. Continue to get the defense up. But then the scoring. Focus on scoring. Once we get that free throw up, we'll start focusing on the driving. And this guy is definitely, hopefully, to be in our long term plan. This is the Icelandic connection there. I need to keep him um, healthy and know where he's at at all times for my national team. can also do is go see I'm not sure if there's an easy way to see the teams that have signed or different things that have happened contract wise No, 
I think I can easily hone in on that. If I want to see what different roster changes happened in the NBA. Open it up and take a real quick look, see if anything stands out. LeBron still in Cleveland. This team is stacked because Thomas is actually playing and is expected to do well. Tristan Thompson is actually playing center, so the whole roster's bounced out like they thought it would, which is not how it ever really happened. D Rose is probably playing above. I mean, and like all these things that were supposed to happen. How it was supposed to be when they were there. Keith Langford, where does he come from? He's shooting up, damn. Keith Langford, man. A stud. This entire team is like ex exaggerated. Just like that Golden State roster is. Chris Sanchetti. He wouldn't even be an upgrade, really. His score is pretty solid. He's transferred us to the course. They do have a little roster switcheroo here. Markel Fultz. So where'd he come from? So there's that. Fultz was on the 76ers. Anything that stands out. Someone's being hurt. That's not good, and that stands out. McAdoo. Bring these guys in from somewhere. He's got a Philly jersey on his picture. They might have just let him roll because they have so much talent on this team. Get Giannis to come play. Him and his brother. Thorn Maker, what was he making? 293. If I hadn't gotten robbed on that surprise facility expense, this 20 in blocking, 18 in jump, 18 in inside scoring. 
stupid and running on running all over the Icelandic League. It's transfer listed too. This is at the bottom of the roster. Look at this. They have Agravana supposedly. Let's pick one more random team and see what's going on with the roster. Because it looks like some stuff happened, but not a whole lot of stuff. Why is still in San Antonio? Their manager is George Carl. How's that? Seem to beat. That's interesting. Shane Morton, I think we're there. Jamal Murray. Yeah, he's not even playing. Let's see. I do think maybe the NBA's preseason that some of these guys maybe get cut. Not all of them get to stay. Interesting that George Carl, the coach. Of this team looks like. We got Hot Mess, Zubop. Dude, why have I not come after him? <clears throat> when Mula Maravich contracts up. Going back to my. NBA 2K season I had a year or two ago. Zuba. Zubas. How do you want to pronounce it? Was cornerstone of one of my rebuilds. I have to short this for the pusher. I'm getting paid 66. These guys that I gave perfectly good contract offers to, Eliason, he's not signed. He's not playing now. And Hernanson, on the other hand. He actually ended up making a decent bank. He's on a contract for six years. Six years he'll be with the Ethnicos. Dang, gone. Do they believe in him? I would say to give him that many years, and he's getting paid forty grand more than he's worth right now. It's 
So I guess note to self is to blow it out and just not go for three or four years. Interesting to follow, see how he does in his new new environment. Brandon Ingram's not starting. Is Lou Alvain? Jeez. I'm gonna fix that. Kuzma's on my freaking inactive. Two losses is two. Otherwise, essentially being given away. I agree with Lonzo Ball's 20 in ball handling. Seeing what these guys get paid. Zubaz contract is ridiculous. So low. Right. Who else? I think the Charlotte Hornets went off last season, so I want to see what the heck. I had it a short bench. How did this team win anything last time? But well, then some of these numbers are stupid. Gilchrist is an 18 in power. So is Zellers. Dwight Howard's a 20 in power now. 20 in jump. So we have to just hope and wait that he starts to decline. And he is, I guess. These numbers are stupid. Alright, on that note, knowing that there's all these things out there that I need to probably fix with the editor, maybe that's something I'm going to do this weekend. Kicking around the idea of a 24 hour stream, maybe. Start Friday night. Go. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe all day Sunday. Most of the day Saturday. I'm still yawning. I don't know. I'd like some feedback. Let me know what day works best for you. And uh, we'll see what we can do. I appreciate you uh, keeping track of what I'm doing and talking about by myself for another night. Come and join me live next time. Until then, thanks so much. Thanks.